Como ça va? That means how you doing? Welcome to the season one finale of Cajun Craftastrophe. I really hope that you're having a great holiday season. Me, I'm Tinu, and I was recently inspired to build a retro futurism diorama based off of the movie posters, magazines, books, and bad B movies of the 1950s. In part one, I sculpted the main characters, an undead astronaut and the notorious intergalactic cookworm. In part two, I built up the inner structure of the retro kitchen and I added in some details. So for Christmas this year, I want to wrap the whole thing up and have some fun along the way. If this sounds like a good time to you, then let's get our craft on. Okay, let's get started by laying in a floor. We'll use some popsicle sticks. Okay, we spread on some wood glue. And just lay them in there. Hey, Dinu, you forgot to introduce me, and it's the season finale at that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my daddy. Easy, contain your excitement there, Dinu. I'm sorry, daddy, uh, I apologize. Apology accepted. Uh, you making a little floor for your dollhouse? It's not a dollhouse. There's no other word for it. Diorama. Don't make up words just because you're embarrassed you build dollhouses. It's sad. That's not what's happening. Hey, I'm just happy your dolls have some place to live instead of being spread all over the living room. Those are action figures. We've had this conversation like a million times. I don't recall. You have a selective memory. Dollhouse. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I've put a wash of a uh, burn umber on my diorama floor. Hey, you almost said thou else, which would be more accurate. Let's make a crate. The first thing I want to do to make a little shipping crate is to give it some battle damage. Make it kind of look weathered. Failed to see how a crate fits in with uh, what you're building here, a retro dollhouse. It's a diorama, and there's a little more to this story going on than you might think. Maybe the worm sits on a crate instead of a chair. And maybe he likes Chinese food. Oh, well, then we have that in common. General's chicken. Oh, that's my favorite. That and those little bitty red ribs. Oh, I love those. I was able to find these templates online, but the creator didn't want me to name him so if you look around i'm sure you can find it maybe he didn't want to be associated with the houses maybe look how cool these are hey look at that he also made some pizza boxes i wonder if he makes danish fried chicken boxes that would be adorable not doubt it don't be so negative it's the holiday season lighten up you know that you're right merry holidays to you that's a little better well look check this out let's put a little bit of grease in there i'm just using some olive oil Gotta have a greasy pizza box. As a serious foodie, I appreciate your attention to detail. Bon matin. That means good morning. The mushroom. Man, look at how much the wall warped. Let's make a new one. And voila, new wall. Dishes. All right, this is the kitchen, so I need some bowls, I need some cups. So here I'm using some super sculpey, and on top of this ball stylus, I put a little baby oil, and I'm gonna wrap the super sculpey around this, and this will be the base for a bowl. See, we can flatten the bottom. So I'm gonna bake this, and then worry about sanding down the top edge. Let's build a coffee cup using these same principles. Hey, look at that. That's a pretty neat way to smooth out the sides of the cup. Thank you. Okay, these are all baked up. Let's sand them. Here 
Here I'm making a handle for the coffee cup using some Super Sculpey, bacon bond, and uh, patience. Lots of patience. I'd probably have to drink like 9,000 of those to get going in the morning. I found these cool little glass tiles at Dollar Tree for a dollar. Let's make a backsplash. What on earth is this? I'm in Photoshop here and I'm gonna change this label. So I'm using the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna erase all of this and add our own text. Old worm beer. Come on, Tinu. It's not my fault you aren't familiar with Milwaukee's finer eels. Right, yeah, I bet it tastes as good as its name. You'd still try it. In the name of science, yes, I'd still try it. Science? And flavor curiosity. Oh, hey, I don't know if y'all know this, but my wife, she paints. And she did this series of paintings called The Nine Muses based off of Greek mythology. But then she also did a series called The Nine Boozes based off of uh, drinks. So I grabbed a couple of those and I'm uh, going to use these maybe as a poster inside of the kitchen. Now I know why I can never find a pen in this house. When a pen runs out of ink, I save it. I'm just saying I can never find a pen when I need one. I'm gonna use these pens to make some beer cans. Old worm beer. You can really taste the hops. And probably the worms too. Tinu, stop what you're doing right now. We had a level five cycle fan alert. I didn't know that was a thing. Yes, I just went check the mailbox and it's jam packed with Christmas cards. Well, that sounds like a wonderful thing, daddy. On the surface, it appears that way, but on close inspection, you'll see that all of the cards come from one person. You opened my mail again? Tinu, I had to declare martial law in this household because we're at a level five cycle fan alert. Pay attention. Daddy. I am completely completely within my legal rights. She calls herself Camille the Dreamer. I bet you $100 that's not her birth name. Listen to this. I had a dream last night that outside my window was a vulture. I was feeding it balled up hamburger saying to it, who's a dirty bird? Who's a dirty bird? Maybe she just likes animals. Right. What about this one? Last night I had a dream that my jack in the box turned into a shark in the box. So what? The new children should not play with sharks. Have you never seen Shark Week? I see nothing wrong with these. This one says all I want for Christmas is Tinu. There's a Christmas tree on fire and little hearts with knives stabbed into them. Uh, okay, that's a little disconcerting. It'll be a Christmas miracle if you make it through the holiday season without finding yourself hogtied in a trunk headed to the <laughs> what? Have you ever seen that movie Misery with Sandy Bates? Yes. It's gonna be exactly like that except with more Christmas carols. Where are you going? To set the tripwires. Oh boy. Well, that's a look into a normal day here. Daddy, are you okay? I tripped. Get me my special eggnog. It'll take the edge off the pain. Let's use a nail to make a doorknob. Tinu, why? The door was looking pretty. Now you're going to mess it all up. Well, maybe there's more to the story than we first thought. If you say so. I do. Okay, now I'm building a little table.
When I went to Lowe's and bought my flooring tile, I also found some vinyl samples. So that's what I'm using for the tabletop. Wait, you just took that from Lowe's without paying for it? They offer samples, so I took a few. This is one of those rare moments where uh, I'm proud of you, boy. Thank you. Oh, hey, yeah, I was recording a podcast with Norb Makes, and Norb asked me, he said, hey, Tina, why do you use super glue when you're using foam core? Aren't you aware that it melts the foam? And I am. When I use super glue like this, I'm always using it on a part that won't show. And I only do this when I don't have the patience to wait for PVA glue. Pizza. With a title like that, you got my attention. And that's all I ever wanted. Do I detect a note of sarcasm? Absolutely not. See, when you say it like that, I just don't know. Let's just focus back on the crafts. Hey, we should order a pizza tonight. Okay. I'm adding a little bit of wear and tear here. Now, as I put in this backsplash, let me show you something. Remember when I made the faucet out of cost clay? Now, I would have broken this thing like five times already if it wasn't flexible. So, I love cost clay. Let's make some window glass. bunch of dowels so I can make cans for the kitchen but these tops don't look very good so I took a picture of the bottom of these refried beans put it into Photoshop and then printed it out and look at this we got some can tops inspiration there are two creators who have inspired me more than anyone else to create my diorama Aira from Bentley House Minis is an incredible builder she spent 11 years building this Adams Family Mansion. Mm, that's just a level of commitment that I haven't seen anyone else doing on YouTube or even in life in general. Anyway, she's a phenomenal resource for all things many. I'll be recording a podcast with Aira soon, so be on the lookout for that. And then there's Nick from Abandoned Miniatures. Nick owns a giant cat who luckily doesn't destroy his work Godzilla style. He's a great builder and an expert cinematographer. I mean, look at the way he films his final builds. It's so cool. So I learned a lot from these guys. Yep, I learned this from Nick and uh, I learned this from Aira. So go check these two creators out. Aira from Bentley House Minis and Nick from Abandoned Miniatures. Thanks guys. I'm using some polystyrene sheets to make some little shelves. These sheets that I got are really firm and it's really nice to work with. Okay, I think it's right about here that you're gonna start to understand that the story of the worm and his nice little 1950s retro house may not be as idyllic as it first seemed. Something else is going on here. You losing me, what are you talking about? Well, this house is not gonna exactly be leave it to Beaver. The intergalactic hookworm is a space criminal, and uh, he's been using this house as his hideout. And let's just say he's not big on domestic chores and housekeeping. This sounds very similar to someone we both know. Really? Anyway, in the movies, I love when someone gets fixated on solving an investigation and they got an investigation wall with pictures and string and newspaper articles and all kinds of things all over the wall. I love that. So the intergalactic hookworm has this unhealthy fixation with Space Rabbit. And let's just say he's not a fan. I'm gonna mix two of us. Try to be nice. It's the holidays. I'm just expressing my opinion. The doctor says it's good for me. The doctor never said that. Do you know you do not have access to my medical records, so uh, start backpedaling. <laughs> not backpedaling. Boy, you weren't kidding when you said this guy doesn't like Space Rabbit. He's like right out of the movie 7. He's only been hiding out for 10 days? No, I added some more off camera. There's a coffee spill. Gravity. Super glue. Coffee cup.
Season 1 Recap. Okay, I thought it'd be fun to look back at some of the stuff that happened in Season 1. You ready? Let's go. you do to my car, poor? <laughs> Check this out, you can use a pin to make a little coffee ring. Boy, this worm is an animal, you can't even use a coaster. I don't think I've ever seen you use a coaster. Well, you're not very observant. Mm -hmm. This is what's cool about polystyrene sheets. You score it and then you can just break it off. Nice and clean. I was able to make the Sculpey and the polystyrene together at a low temperature. The plastic didn't melt. This is a not very skilled attempt at making a pillowcase. So I flip it inside out and then I stuff it with some cotton balls. And here I'm using a tea bag to create the place where the worm lays his head because, you know, his head's pretty greasy. He doesn't have great hygiene overall. Tinu, I have a feeling you're making the most disgusting dollhouse I've ever seen. The most disgusting diorama you've ever seen. Uh, besides, it's an intergalactic hookworm. What did you expect? What, he sleeps where the stove is supposed to be? Yes, this is how you get around not building a stove because you lack the skills at this point. Why, well, you always trying to get out of something, huh? 
talk about the pod factory calling the kettle black. I'm just playing to my strengths. Oh look, this is the little trail that the worm leaves when he's slithering across the dirty kitchen floor. Yeah. My friend Rachel Gets Creative came up with this idea. She had told me that the hookworm should have a hook that he can grab with his tail, kind of like an old school pirate. I really like this idea, so I'm going to incorporate it into the story. Dinu, if you wanted to bang up the table legs, you should have done it before you attached it to the table. Yeah, you're right. I should have. Everybody knows this. Okay, let's throw in some more fun details. Whap! Before I show you the final results of my diorama, I just want to take a minute to say Merry Christmas, Season's Greetings, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, and yeah, I'm sure there's a bunch more ways to say it that I just don't know. Anyway, I hope you beautiful people have an amazing new year. I'm going to be back with Season 2 at about the middle or end of January, but if you want to help support the channel and get some more fun stuff coming, then join me on Patreon. I'm going to be doing some updates on there and uh, we can hang out. Here's a couple of pro crafting tips. So if you're doing a bunch of crafting this holiday season and you're having trouble figuring out what makes it a Christmas craft, just throw a Santa hat on it. Not Christmas, Christmas. Not Christmas, Christmas. Not Christmas, Christmas. Yep, Christmas. Or you can buy some red and white polymer clay, roll it up, twist it together and make candy cane weapons. Or, or you can just make candy canes. Yeah, just, just make candy canes. You can make more seasonal security force guys, or you can make a polar bear, or this elf who looks like a scarecrow. This guy only plays Christmas carols on that guitar, so it's technically a Christmas ornament. And I'm sad to say that these two guys were elves at Santa's shop, but they were basically slackers, and um, Santa decided to make an example out of them. Uh, the whole naughty nice thing. He runs a tight ship. Anyway, whatever you do, don't make these guys, because, well, they're freaking creepy. Christmas.